I started with affiliate marketing, you know, linking other people's toolkits in my videos. Like, oh, hey, if you need a toolkit, go click this link. I get some commission off of that. And I was like, I was laying in bed one night at like two o'clock in the morning. And I was like, clicked in my head. It's like, <laughs> why am I pushing somebody else? Why stuff? am I? Yeah, I could totally sell these myself. And so I got on like Alibaba right then, found a supplier, went through like, you know, a couple different suppliers to find one that was good. And I've been working with them for like the last four years selling my own toolkits. And the cool thing is, is that you can affiliate link your own products on Amazon. So you yep. can like double dip an Amazon system. Yep. And that's totally legal. It says right there in their terms of service Absolutely. that you can do this. In this episode, we talk with Zach Nilsson from the YouTube channel, Jerry Rig Everything. Zach was able to explode on YouTube to over 5 million subscribers with his passion for learning and also repairing. He's most known for his cell phone videos, doing strength tests, durability tests, and all crazy things. This is Creative Disruption, the intersection where entertainment, data, and creativity meet. Here's your host, Ricky Ray Butler and Daryl Leaves. Welcome back to the Creative Disruption Podcast, where we talk about everything that's disrupting the industry and those individuals that create ripples in the industry. And I'm joined by my friend, Ricky Ray Butler. How are you doing, Ricky? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? You're doing wonderful. Yes. Yes. Guess what? So uh, there's some big things that happen in my personal life. I want to kind of bring this up. And it can be to our banter, but I have a son that just made it to the Philippines. He's like really going for two years mm -hmm. out to serve the people of the Philippines. And he went to the remote area of of the Philippines. It's like I I, I zoomed in on so, like, the GPS. Wow! Like, and there's what, like, what kind of like two homes. <laughs> oh, okay. No, it, no, there wasn't. It wasn't very big. It's like our the town that I live in is like less than three thousand people, and it's a lot smaller than that. And so, wow, so, so like, like really like the boonies. Yeah, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the boonies for sure. But what I want to talk about, what I want to do a little banter on, is the emerging markets. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did a consult for one of the biggest influencers in the Philippines, and uh, I kind of picked him up. I didn't know – I really personally didn't know how big he was until I got his data. And then also one of my employees said, oh, um, he's huge because my one of my employees lives in the Philippines. And mm -hmm. I says, oh, I didn't know anything about it. And so really, really cool. We had this conversation, and this creator that's there, he's kind of like the Oprah in the Philippines – he was getting over 500 million video views a month. Wow. And I'm like, what? You know, so when I was digging into it, I'm like, this has to be something fishy is going on. But no, they were super engaged and like the comment to view ratio was off the charts. Now, keep in mind, the CPMs and everything that's happening in the Philippines are very low. Is very low. For now. For now. But that, that market, I see. The Philippine is a high consumer type of content because they're not getting all the different stations on the mm -hmm. TV or anything like that. They're they're actually getting it through the phone. And the reason why I brought this up with my son is, you know, um, he's able to call home, uh, you know, once a week, and we can do video calls. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how are they going to do it? Well, they just gave him a cell phone. And like, okay, go ahead, just use the data. You can call back, and you know, we can have a video chat every week. Um, we're like you, you travel quite a bit, and you're yeah. trying to establish your company all over the world, mm -hmm. um, like. What about the lower, I don't want to say the lower, what about the the um, the countries that are just emerging? The emerging know, with, markets. Yeah, yeah, in, in, in technology today. Where, where are you seeing that? We're watching them all like a hawk. Um, with the decentralization of content, which we've talked a lot about, right? Um, really rapidly we're seeing a decentralization of influence where there's a lot of you know, countries or areas um, that maybe didn't have as much of a voice before that are now getting a voice. Yeah. Um, one country specifically that I, I'd point out is Indonesia. Right. We're seeing a lot, uh, a, a trend with, within our company um, at Ben, we're seeing a trend of clients wanting to you know, take advantage of all the momentum of, and, and the growth of creator content I, in, that, in, that, in that country and region. I, I can tell you right now, uh, one, one, of the of, one, of the, one of the biggest creators on YouTube platform is Winji, mm -hmm. and Winji's biggest audience is part in Indonesia. Like, like she's, she's in that area. She's, you know, she's like, I, I think she's in Singapore living right now, or mm -hmm. that or Australia, one or the other. But I know that she has a huge influence there, but it also crosses over. It's more global, too. It's not just those individuals that are there. Well, I remember talking to creators um, you know, in the last five to ten years where they're saying, oh, we have this really active audience from Singapore. <laughs> and, and, and so as technology progresses, as the Internet progresses, and, and people have much you know, faster and better access you know, to Internet and data, 
we're going to be seeing so much more content. And so we've we've talked before, like we're at the tip of the right. iceberg. You know, there is so there's already millions and millions of influencers out there today. It's going to get much more. You know, I mean, it's going to become much and much more bigger. So there's there's a good you know chunk of creators there from like South Africa. I imagine the rest of the, the continent of Africa, as there's better internet, as there's better technology, which it's already rapidly evolving and changing. Right, right. We're going to be seeing some amazing things, and I really think you know this this type of content is going to be able to help lift a lot of different countries um, up and 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 make it so they get some more tourism. Um, and it's and it's going to create a lot of you know f- I mean economical wealth well and, I and, 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 and I see this too is uh, some some countries are like especially during political time mm-hmm. that they're suppressing like they're even uh, putting suppressing the bandwidth on internet so that messages can't go out and so I look at a couple things like I I look for visionaries and I think I don't care what anyone says Elon Musk is the visionary of our time oh for sure and and he just sent out a tweet. You know, and he's using global internet, and that right there uh, is using global internet. Explain. Yeah, well, I mean, you you definitely know this because I know that you invested in the company that's actually putting up internet in the sky for everyone to use, and it's going to be affordable, and it's going to go all over. So you can be in in the deserts, it, you know, in Saudi Arabia, and still have blazing speeds, and no, it's the, just off the charts. They're going to be. It's, I mean, oh. I'm fearful for Skynet and, you know, some Terminator <laughs> killing me and my family, See, but I, you know. I'm so excited that walls will be breaking down. Yeah. And that there are going to be ways for us to be able to better connect and understand other cultures and subcultures. You know, we know about all the countries, but we don't know about all the different areas in the, right. and, and, and all the different tribes yeah. that are in all these different places. And there's well, just going to be so much education that comes out of this. But more than anything, I'm really excited for... You know, different countries that maybe don't have a lot of tourism that are going to be able to show how beautiful their culture is and how you right. know, amazing their food is and then, and that they're going to be able to progress and 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 make it so these other and, developing countries and can be lifted more And they're able to up. get education and everything from the palm of their own hand. It's like that that phone. And I think this is a good segue to introduce yeah. our guest because he does a lot with phones. Yes. I didn't think that when he actually started working on phones that he would realize – that he would be disrupting the industry with what he's doing right now. Yes. Do you want to introduce our guest? Yes, today we have Zach Nelson with Jerry Rig Everything. And if you haven't seen um, Zach's you know, YouTube channel, um, you're most likely going to binge watch a lot of it once you yeah. discover it. <laughs> um, I, it's gotten to the point where I, I don't actually subscribe. I've like, I try to distance myself because you know, there, there's different channels like yours and like, you know, like King of Random that – Put up such interesting, unique, co- you know, um, content with with things that you're doing with like technology that um, it, it just makes anyone geek out. And I and I, I realize that I've spent so much time watching your content, that I've had to like back off, <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> which you. is a compliment. Yeah, yeah, that's a good thing. You. It's the same reason why I stopped so playing I'm World gonna, of War, uh, Warcraft Three back in the day. Even though that we just introduced <laughs> him, I'm going to cut in because I can do that because yes. we can do these things. I'm going to give him another compliment. He actually has the best voice and best whistle oh, on YouTube. Oh, for sure. Oh, wow. His well, whistle. Oh, his oh, whistle oh, is oh, off the oh, charts. <laughs> and he'll just do it like sporadically. I'm like, hey, what's going on there? But no, but I think, it, like, regardless, we'll introduce him in a second, but he needs to start an ASMR channel just with him talking. Oh, for just sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just read. He's like, okay. Is, yeah, is it creepy that, you know, Daryl's suggesting this? You know, <laughs> he wants to fall asleep to yeah, your voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it says read like the encyclopedia red. or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But uh, welcome. Thank you for for coming on. Appreciate that. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, why don't you give us some like for the people that don't know who you are, just a little bit of background. We don't want to go too much into. It. We don't want this to be a biography or anything like that. We want right. to get into and talk about things that are disrupting. But give us some context. So, uh, yeah. So I'm Zach Nelson from the YouTube channel Jerry Everything. Uh, started about seven years ago. Um, you know, with motorcycles and jeeps. You know, just thinking I was gonna, you know, rig everything or fix everything. Um, but then I realized that you know way more people have questions about cell phones and technology. And if I wanted a bigger audience, you know, that's kind of the direction I'd have to take my channel. So long story short, I went from, you know, automotive into the technology and, uh, you know, it's, it's been great. Yeah. And did you work like at like a Verizon store or something? Was it, were you working like on, uh, phones? Like where did you get the experience to? Yeah. So I worked at T-Mobile and Sprint, um, you know, while the other guys, right. The other guys, (laughs) um, while I was going to college, I was doing it all simultaneously working full time, school full time, and then doing YouTube on the side. Um, and yeah, I was repairing phones for Sprint. And so that's kind of where, you know, that, uh, knowledge came from, I guess. That's great. That's great. 
Um, so like, like when did you have like your aha moment? Like, like, okay, you, you realize, okay, I need to go mainstream, but when did it actually start taking off for you? And what did that look like? So when it, when I started to go mainstream or like, you know, more people started watching, cause like it takes a very special type of person to watch a cell phone repair video. Like just, <laughs> it's very boring content. Right. And so when I, and I realized that, and so I, I tried to spice it up a little bit, but when I started doing my durability tests is when more people started watching. It, it went nuts on Reddit. Like I a, saw that. There's a bigger audience yeah. willing to see how durable a phone is than willing to watch, you know, a teardown. But the funny thing is in the last couple of years, it's switched back. Now more people are watching my teardowns instead of my durability tests because people, you know, yeah, it's just more interesting, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we brought up the tweet that was set out by Elon Musk and, you know, he says, Hey, you know, I, I don't even, I can't even remember what the tweet was, but what do you think about this global internet thing? Like, is this like having the device in people's hands around the world? What is that going to do to not only this industry, but the world? What do you think? I think it's literally going to disrupt everything and not so much for the tourism aspect, but because like any question I have at any point during the day or night, I can get an answer to it. Right. And so I don't have to wait and ask, you know, some smart person at the library or go check out a book or like send a letter to somebody or borrow an encyclopedia. I can get it within seconds. And so getting giving that knowledge and that power to everyone on the planet is just going to skyrocket everything as a whole and lift everyone up at the same time. 100%. I, I mean, that will be even a bigger impact. Of, of course, like being able to get more educated and learn more, that's, that's well, going to help people climb out of poverty as well. I, I look at going into a lawyer's office, and I went to my lawyer's office just for some mm -hmm. some stuff, and he has all these books on the wall. I'm like, I know you don't crack those books, man. You're, right. you're on your phone searching. You're on your computer going. And it's like it's changed humanity because before we had to retain so much. Now it's about how quick can you find the information. Right. Right. And I think that's where uh, cell phones are definitely going to disrupt that. But it's not cell phones that's going to disrupt it. It's getting bandwidth that's affordable so it can be more global. And that's why I'm excited about what's going on. Well, I remember when I went to college, you know, back in the day, you know, in the Ice Age. <laughs> and, you know, we were always told to buy a certain amount of textbooks. And most of the time, the Here professors lied. <laughs> and I really just needed one or two, and they had to be by like five. Right, and you never and so use them. What I would do is I'd take one quiz and then one test, and then I'd be able to figure out, you know, you know the patterns in the class, and then I would rely on Wikipedia. And, and, and people would say, well, that's a horrible source of information. No, like I had a full-ride scholarship, academic scholarship, and it was because I was able to – binge study, I guess, yeah. in Wikipedia, and it was able to lay it out and give me information I'm in a way that was much easier for me to interpret and understand, and it, it made it so I was very successful in my classes. Yeah. So, funny story. It's going to be happening across the globe. I don't know how, how entirely legal this is, but... <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't know yet. We'll find out. <laughs> the legalities. Um, so, I, I hated the fact that you had to buy textbooks. It was like the worst thing ever. Oh, sure. It's like, I'm already paying... Anyway, that's a different story. But, so there was... One of my classes, you could actually check out the textbook from the library, but you can only do it one day at a time. And so, like, it, it was legal to check out the textbook from the library. <laughs> but instead of checking out the textbook from the library every single day or buying it myself, one of the days I was in the library, I just took a picture of every single page with my cell phone. And then used it for the rest of the year. There we go. <laughs> How much time but, did that take? But, it but, just took like thirty minutes, and well, I never had to go back to the library again. But the question is, is, what type of camera did you have on that phone? It couldn't be that good when you go to school. Um, it had to been like a, a, f a smartphone from like four years ago, so it had to been high okay, definition enough to know. work. I mean, I couldn't like search it like a PDF or anything, but you know, it worked. Got the job done. Yeah. And I didn't have to buy the textbook, so. Well, and, and I think you're right in the sense that, you know, it's going to give people new uh, ways to find and learn and that curiosity, that human curiosity is going to go. And what I found too, is there's certain levels of expertise. Like I, I shared this on the podcast before, but it's really relevant now. Um, I served uh, some time for my church in Paraguay, in the jungles of Paraguay. And I went to this place that was a little hut and it didn't even have power. They didn't have running water. And I'm like, there's just no way that they're going to ever get out of this. It's a, that vicious cycle because education was really bad. And one of the uh, family members, he was like an eight-year-old boy, uh, a few later, 
you know, years later, their uh, cell phone was there, and they were able to get cell phones for fairly inexpensive, and the bandwidth wasn't too bad, and it was a way that they could actually communicate because there was no phones anywhere. There's no phone lines down there. You'd have to go to like a what they call an Intelco, and you just go and call it a you know telephone station. And he would actually watch YouTube videos, and he learned how to program without a computer by watching YouTube videos from Stanford. Oh, that's amazing. And and then what's even better was he was able to go and learn different languages. He learned English. Uh, he learned Portuguese. And then he is now a programmer in Uruguay, making over $200,000 a year, brought his whole family out of that poverty, and they're living with them, and they he was able to level up. And it was all because of that information was so freely uh, out there. So we're during an election, and I don't want to get political, but there's a lot of conversations about free education. Yeah. And, and there's a part of it that thinks, wait, there's a lot of education out there. Like YouTube, that's one of the main purposes of YouTube is to educate and get informed right. and then also to be entertained. And I, and I wonder, like, why isn't there, like, some type of university infrastructure that can figure out how to aggregate all those lessons and create a testing system around it? Hey, I... I, I'm gonna just ch- chime right in because Seems like, like that'd be much I, more inexpensive. No, like it's it's grubby hands that like mm-hmm. there's been a system in a way to pull money away from people, mm-hmm. and you to get a specific degree you have to go through specific classes instead mm-hmm. of saying hey let's just have you be uh, you know mentor over here with this master and and help you learn this or whatever it's like no you have to have this class that is not going to even be relevant to you in your occupation at all but you have to have it for the credits. And so you have this system that's always built up. We could still follow that system. No, I don't think you can. I, I disagree with that. Like well, I, I, I bet you could invest in enough video content to be able to cover every form of class um, that, 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 well, you, that they, you need. They to have pass. that. On, I mean, they're, they're getting that more and more online. Sure. And I, I think that's where it is. And I think, you know, we should be in charge of our own education. But that should cut a lot of costs as well. Yeah. Well, I don't like, yeah. yeah I, but it was, I mean, that, 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 that could go down a rabbit hole. Um, I don't know. I'm, you are. Let's, let's hear. Let's hear Zach. Yeah, let's Zach. Hear, you are an <laughs> education <laughs> channel. Um, I mean, I mean, and and I'm I'm sure a lot of people that come to your channel, you know, have expressed with you, you know, a lot of gratitude with the education that they received. Yeah, you want to expound upon that? It was super super annoying to me. So I I did graduate, got my degree. Um, but it was super annoying to me that I would go to class and the teacher would pull up a YouTube video and show us, let that YouTube video explain Teach. the concept. Yeah. Like, sure. what am I paying for right now? And as I feel the same thing. There needs to be a whole change in the system. Because, like, in the last five years, technology has developed so fast, mm-hmm. and the school system and the textbook system has not changed at all. And so I'm all for this I, massive... I'll, I'll have it all be video. I'll tell you what. You know, here's, here's the thing is um, I have a cousin, and, and she ha- her husband teaches school and all that mm-hmm. stuff. I invited him to come to Vid Summit because he teaches a tech class. This is, look... You should actually come down. You're in high school. You need to be relevant. Like a lot of the stuff that you're teaching isn't relevant. He's saying, ah, we're, you know, we're cutting edge and this, and that. I'm like, no, nah, you're not. So they, he came down and, and luckily that his principal says, hey, look, if you had a ticket to get there, I'll get you there and you can go from there. So that, you know, the school provided for that. And he went back with like 82 pages of notes and he goes, I'm going to totally change my whole curriculum because we're doing it wrong. You know, we need to, mm. to empower the people and give curriculum. It's like, hey, here, you go find that you know, the learnings from it, you know, I don't think they need to do it. They just need to be those mentors to help facilitate them learning, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I think too, it's like, um, I, and, and I ran into this in school. It's like, I, I had two policies. Number one, if I couldn't finish the homework in class, it wouldn't get done. Cause I thought it was a waste of time. And number two, like I would spend time on what I was interested in. And there wasn't much in the school that I was interested in, except for computers, except for the classes. And I, I would do whatever I could to learn programming or whatever, just so that I can get, you know, into the computer lab, you know, and this is way back in the nineties. And so it's like, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, we just need to get access for, for, uh, children to learn and, and get out of their way. Like we just got it. They, they'll know what to do. We need to get less structure and get out of the way. Now that's coming from someone that I, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm disappointed where our education system is in the United States at least. So sure. I, I think, I think, I think that's how it is across the board. <laughs> well, I, there's a couple places. I think Finland only has like a, a you know, for public education, it's like only three hours or four hours in a oh, day. Oh, sure. I, oh, I'm saying and they're, the they're just States. very, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. So what trends are you noticing right now that's that's helping, you know, with you in creating content? 
Um, so back to what you guys are talking about with the, with the increase of internet, we all keep cycling back to this, um, yeah. but like the growth of India. So like right now my audience is still largely, you know, the United States, sure. but India is my second, almost neck and neck with the United wow. States. Wow. Wow. Just because of the emerging market, everyone's getting smartphones. Like there's some phones that I review that are, you know, um, outside of the United States where actually more people outside the United States watch the video. That is crazy. And it's like, you know, it's, it's the biggest market and I'm, I'm all for it. That's really cool. So globalization is going to continue to increase and continue to be a huge trend. And cause like all content right now, whether it's traditional content, like, you know, film or TV or streaming content or influencer content, it's all global content. What's interesting is because of this, there's also a, a growing economy with, micro and nano influencers. I say nano because everyone's saying it right now, but right. they're just all micro, <laughs> if, you ask my, if right. you ask my opinion. But what's interesting is we're now also seeing brands where they do a lot of stuff with like the, the top tier creators that have global audiences, but they're also having us literally target creators that are really small from specific cities hmm. that, that maybe only have 5,000 followers, but all, most of those followers are from that specific city. And, and we're seeing a lot of awesome results and a lot of awesome conversions as a result of it as well. And so it, it's a brand that is, you know, basically, you know, leveraging both the, 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 the biggest, you know, communities out there as well as like the more niche, smaller communities out there. And you got to kind of have a mix to do both. But it's, it's a fascinating because that's how it's going to be with all the top tier creators. They're going to continue to see their audience continue to grow faster and faster as long right. as you're staying relevant and you know pivoting where you need to pivot but there's also going to be even a bigger opportunity with localization you know in addition to globalization Got yeah it. i have people asking me all the time like oh youtube's so saturated could i start a youtube channel now and it'd be okay <laughs> yeah. they're, they're like scared but it's like yeah there's more people doing it but there's also so many more eyeballs watching it yeah and like they're both growing at the same time and there's there's room for everybody I, I, Absolutely. I, I, I always tell people it's not oversaturated only if you it's oversaturated if you just do what everybody else is doing right. if you do something unique and you know put your own spin on it it's not even oversaturated there's like there's so many eyeballs out there looking for great content so yeah, and 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 the possibilities for brands are, are endless I mean we have done over you know this year we'll be doing around like 10,000 integrations you know, across the board. And how do you even funny, manage that? So this is the thing. What's funny is we're barely penetrating. We're barely penetrating what's out there. I know, but there's so much content out there that us being the biggest company that's doing integrations, um, we're but, barely accessing, uh, you know, a, a, a percentage of that, of that content out there. But 10,000, I, I, I'm putting at it like this. And, and I know that you have software and systems and oh, stuff yeah. in place and then a lot, you can't talk about it, but Oh, well, um, I can talk let, about it. But let's let's go Our through. Technology really helps. Let's, let's go through. The let's go through Zach because like it's fourth quarter. You probably have some brand deals, right? You have some yeah. stuff. Well, What's the more this, this at this time than any other well, time? Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. that and I guess January you'd have quite a bit right before CES and stuff like that. Would you? Honestly, I've been slammed all year. Oh wow! With wow. brand deals. So you have brand deals, and what's the process of the brand? you know, working with you and you doing the video? Like, how much work is that when when they're coming with you? Hey, we'd like to do this. How much time does it usually take? Um, it depends on the brand. Um, there's uh, one particular brand that I was working with, you know, it was one of the larger brand deals and they wanted, you know, in the contract, it had like two or three revisions, right. you know, suggestions where they could change stuff inside the content. Um, but they went through like four or five and it was like the biggest nightmare. Um, but you're then, probably like, why am I doing this? <laughs> that was, that was a one-off. Most brands are actually really easy to work with. They trust that, you know, I know my audience, I know how to communicate something I can, you know, sell a product or, you know, mention a product well. Um, and so most of them don't even ask for any revisions at all. It's just like, all right, perfect, let's do this. So they, but the, how many hours would you say that the brand's working with you and vice versa on getting something approved? Um, for like a video without a brand, it's like, there's just like a one hour difference, I would say. Yeah, okay. The video with a brand in it. Okay. I mean, I have to sit there for a little bit and like, think of how to word it. email and stuff like that in, in, in addition to that to connect with them for sure. Yeah, just a couple hours. It's not that yeah. big of a deal. Yeah. What has been your favorite brand project to work on? So there's a company, I, I really like doing stuff that fits with my audience. Um, so c working with Audible, those guys have been a dream. Like yeah. I love working with them. And then Dbrand, like they are just, they following them on Twitter is like they know how to social market themselves sure 
And then like, and they also don't, they don't even ask for revision when they, when I do a brand deal with them. Go for it. There's like, do whatever you do and we'll pay you later. And it's just like, all right, let's do it. Yeah. So it's like those brands, like those two brands are like ideal. So one of the things that um, really impressed me about you, and there's a lot of things that really impressed me, but I I noticed I was watching one of your videos and um, everything's strategically placed in your videos. And I I don't think a lot of people pick up on it, but I'm one of these guys that I have that keen eye and um, I'm able to see those things. And then I'm looking and like you have your own products too. Like you do a lot of fulfillment on Amazon. Could you kind of talk about that and what you do to actually generate sales for your own brand? Uh, not not talking about your YouTube videos, but other things that you're actually pushing and promoting. Yeah. So when I first started, um, I knew YouTube was what I wanted to do for my very first video. This is like clear as day. This is going to be my career. Um, and so I realized that I would have to figure out how to monetize that, you know, more than just AdSense. And so as I was like, I started with affiliate marketing, you know, linking other people's toolkits in my videos. Like, oh, hey, if you need a toolkit, go click this link. I get some commission off of that. And I was like. I was laying in bed one night at like two o'clock in the morning and I was like, clicked in my head. I was like, <laughs> why am I pushing somebody else? Why stuff? am I? Yeah, I could totally sell these myself. And so I got on like Alibaba right then, found a supplier, went through like, you know, a couple of different suppliers to find one that was good. And I've been working with them for like the last four years selling my own toolkits. And the cool thing is, is that you can affiliate link your own products on Amazon. So you yep. can like double dip an Amazon system. Yep. And that's totally legal. It says right there in their terms of service Absolutely. that you can do this. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Yep. Um, they have changed their commission structure recently. So I'm, you know, probably three years ago was the best time to work with Amazon. Now, not so much, but it's still worthwhile. Right. Um, as far as the affiliate stuff, selling, selling your own products is still pretty viable. Um, but yeah, just selling my own products. And then like, I have my own pry tools with the Jerry rig, everything on it. Um, that's useful because I've had a lot of people try to steal my videos and like upload it on other channels. And it's really hard to upload my video on someone else's channel when the Jerry rig, everything keeps moving all yeah, across. The yeah. Video. I, I did notice that. It's just like, <laughs> okay, here you go. <laughs> That's brilliant. Before they would like to blur out my watermark or something like that. But it's like, now it's like, good luck trying yep. to block this out. Yeah. yeah. See, that's, <laughs> that's, amazing. that's a genius right there. Right? <laughs> Are there others doing that? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't I seen think it. So. I think, I think he's the first well, to all the creators that are following us. Yeah. yeah they need to, that's a solution. For sure. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Let, and let's segue into that because I think this is an interesting conversation. But I would assume that you have a lot of your content that's actually stolen and rebooted and kind of put up somewhere else. Like, how do you combat that? Like, what are you doing to, to do you even care or what's the process? I used to care a lot more. Um, but then once I started doing the Jerry everything and then like, do my fans are like vicious when they find someone <laughs> who's stolen my content, they'll be like messaging me on Twitter and stuff and be like, yo, go take down this video. And then when I go report that video to YouTube it takes me like 60 seconds, YouTube will take it down within like an hour or two. Yeah. They're so good about it. That's great. Um, but then, yeah, YouTube has some things in place where they can also like track videos and like. Do you know? Um, I'm going to tell a secret, and and this is something that I've done for years. Now, YouTube has a three strike system, and I have found that when someone takes content of yours, regardless of it is, we use this with my clients and myself. Um, I would make three different submissions. If they have five videos, I do three different submissions Mm -hmm. because that gives them a three strike and they're out. Yep, I've done that before as well. (laughs) And it's like a good tool because like, hey, you're ripping off someone's stuff. Let's go ahead and do it the right way. So instead of doing all five all at once, it takes just a little bit more time. Sure. But yeah, that's that's a brilliant way to do it. Now, you were recently married. Yes. And you mentioned to Daryl and me earlier that um, when you have your wife and your content, that your content actually performs better. Uh-huh. Why is that? She's way better looking than I am. <laughs> it's a good combination. Yeah. Here. <laughs> no, it's great. And she's, she's really good on camera. Um, and it's just like interesting. Like when I, um, so she is, uh, she's paralyzed from the waist down and it's just, people don't understand that, that, you know, situation. And so they're curious. And so it does add a level of curiosity to right. the videos. And usually we're doing something like, you know, installing an elevator in our house, which also no one really has ever thought about before. Right. Um, so that video like, you know, took that, off. That like, was one of my favorite videos that you've ever done. It was really that, fun. It was really cool. Um, I think it got like 9 million views on YouTube and then like 13 million on Facebook or something. Like it was, it was killing it on both platforms. And we had no idea. I was I published it and I was like, eh, this would be all right. Like it's going to be an okay yeah. video. Blew up. 
And like, you well, know, it's, it's, you took the sawzall and you're like, yeah. going around, oh, come on, this is a disaster. <laughs> right. It was fun though. It was yeah, yeah, it was good. And it still works. Yeah, the elevator's doing great. It's been up for like four months now and still and goes you up and it down. Yourself. Um, so there's the elevators from a company, um, and then I installed it with some contractors, and we put it in the house and filmed everything. Yeah, so it's really cool, though. Right. Cool video. Yeah, but we were talking about CPMs a little bit before we started, and so like when we look at the CPMs from a tech video, there's not as much. Um, I feel like it's a little bit lower on average than like family vloggers or like right. you know something more niche. Um, but I actually made a wedding ring um, out of gold and a piece of titanium from her wheelchair. And the CPMs on that video, you know, from a nerd standpoint are way higher because it's like wedding, you know, gold, jewelry. Exactly. Those, those CPMs are double what a normal tech video is. Wow, that's amazing. And that yeah. is so, so don't romantic. get married more than once. And I had okay. no idea <laughs> until I published the video that the CPMs were higher, but it's, right. it's cool. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. It, it, it is interesting. That's like, that's one of the things when I do consulting, it's like, okay, how can we raise the CPMs? And it is the type of content. Like, um, Xbox versus PS4 or, you know, any PlayStation, you'll actually make more money. If you do a PS4, they'll spend more money. There's more adver advertising money that's there. And so your CPMs actually come up. And so it's really interesting. You just the small little variations, but it's like, so, there so are in this some case, you've got a different audience as well. Well, know? it's the key words that you have in those, you have weddings those and, and rings yeah. and gold. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a female in it. I mean, that's like the, the, you know, you have sure. an amazing. Right. That's going to increase the CPM. Yeah, and then 100%. From, from your example, it's if you are, you know, talking about a product that's currently, you know, doing a really big media plan or yep. media buy. Yep. The know, it makes it so you get, part, you get some of that, you know, media. That's yep. amazing. That, that's awesome. Yeah. I've, I've seen creators triple their CPMs just off of just changing what products they use because like, Hey, this is one that they're actually having inventory on YouTube versus one that doesn't spend anything, you know? And that's, yeah. a, that's a really big deal. So same thing goes for mattresses. I did a mattress video forever ago and it didn't perform very well. I mean, it performed good enough, right. <coughs> um, but then it was one of my top performing videos in my like top 20 performing videos for like the next year even though it wasn't performing as well as other videos just because the CPMs for mattresses are so much higher. Right. There's a lot of competition wow. right well, now. Well, yeah. we have a mattress client we should definitely talk about after this. <laughs> Send them over. It's going to be win-win. Yeah. <laughs> Here you awesome. are, peddling your stuff again. He's always peddling <laughs> stuff. But that's Ricky, though. We, we love Ricky. Um, yeah, so, so you know, you started with one video and – you knew that this was going to be your career. So how many videos have you done now? A um, little over 700. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. That, that's a lot of library of content. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, so uh, I, I do want to bring up another thing, and I think this is a, a, a really interesting aspect. You've developed a lot of friendships, uh, you know, creating content. Uh, one... Um, I was actually moved by uh, their wedding present to you. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk about collaboration and what that means and what that can do for not only uh, creators, but brands that work with these creators? You want to just give that a minute? Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's just one of those things, you know, the more eyeballs, the better. And when you have someone who like being a YouTuber is so unique because no one really knows like how hard it is to talk on camera until the camera is turned on them and then like everything yeah. leaves their brain and it's like it's just like a unique a unique business that only people who are also in the business really understand and so like uh, Dan from the YouTube channel What's Inside like every time okay. we're together like we can just knock out a video really quickly because of a the banter between us and it's like right. I can bounce ideas off of him he can bounce ideas off of me um, and then I don't have to be like you know thinking all of my own ideas because he has ideas that fit into the voids that I, where I'm, you know, still thinking of something new. Um, so the collaborations where there's someone else involved are also, are always, you know, welcome as long as, as long as both the audiences are similar enough that there's no conflict. Right. Right. So I was actually, um, coming back from Romania and Dan was in, uh, Paris and we kind of crossed, but I saw his wife and and his son coming through the airport because we live fairly close. Yeah, and I'm like, "Where's Dan?" He's like, "Oh, he's he's up with Zach. They're shooting a video." Yep. <laughs> we didn't yeah. want to wait around, <laughs> 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 which is always fun. But I think the big thing though is looking at that. You guys were able to grow together, and you, you're able to cross pollinate the subscribers and views, and it's really interesting. Even though that your content. I mean, it's similar, but it's not, you know, in some aspects. I mean, you could totally take it two different ways. 
but you're both passionate about things and you're yeah, and you have a great friendship that's there and i think that's that's something i think all all brands and content creators do it's like there's like, you can always look at people as competition and um you know some people say oh you're doing this and you're my competition but when you look at no this person we could help each other if we work together you know, in, in, in a unique way. I just think it just lifts both, you know, it lifts you both up. And, for sure. and one thing that Dan brought to the table was like, before I met him, I was just like, I'd never thought about the algorithm. It was like, I'm just going to make content, publish whenever I want and yeah. not even worry about anything else. Um, but when he came to the table, he was like, you know, the algorithm is actually kind of important. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, thumbnails, titles, when you publish, all that stuff. And so like my channel would not have grown as fast without his, you know, knowledge of that system. Yeah, and I think you were like right around 400, 500,000 subscribers when you guys first started. When I met him, I was 200,000. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so, crazy. And then now you're... Almost uh, 5 million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All thanks to yeah. Dan from the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> <What's> <laughs> no, <inside>? your, content, <laughs> your content's really good too. And I think it's just more... You know, you, you synergized and um, your content speaks for itself because I, I do this. Like I, I'm obsessed with one platform online. Do you want to take a guess what platform that is? You think TikTok. It's, like, it's not TikTok. I was going to be like, what? <laughs> like not even TikTok. I'm no, obs- you've been bringing I, up TikTok I'm, every single- I know, but I'm, like obsessed, almost every podcast. I'm obsessed with Reddit. Like, I've oh, been yes, Reddit. yes, oh, yes. It's yes. so long. Sure. And the reason why I love Reddit is because Reddit is the place where the internet happens before it happens. And- I noticed, like, I, I could start seeing a theme that you were gonna, about to take off. And it was right around 400, 500,000 subscribers. And I'm like, you know, keeping a close eye. I have tools that kind of tell me how many, you know, Reddit posts there are and how many subreddits and so on and so forth. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you just exploded in a couple huge uh, subreddits. And I've seen a lot of your videos get to, you know, the, the front page of Reddit. And you have a re- really uh, strong Reddit uh, community. Could you talk about that for a minute? Because I think, I think one of the biggest mistakes that brands make and and also creators make is they don't go to the audience or they don't make content that resonates with a specific audience, and that's why it's disconnected. Um, like your content, I feel like is made for Reddit, uh, and it's with Reddit in mind. Do you want to kind of talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So every every you know social media site has its own like feeling, its own vibe, and like Reddit is one of those websites where it's like they're smart enough to know like when someone's selling them something and they're they can sniff out bs like super super quickly and so reddit like you can't you can't beat around the bush you have to say it how it is and you have to say how it is quickly because otherwise you know the the attention will shift or they'll just call you out and leave you in the dust um and so i participated on reddit long before i was even a youtuber and so i kind of knew how reddit the hive mind thinks yeah um and i could you know give them the information how they wanted when they wanted it and not you know be kicked out of their system or their, their the cool club yeah on reddit <laughs> um yeah reddit's one of my favorite platforms as well yeah you know, w- but what i'm interested though was um usually reddit's full <laughs> of a lot of hate um right. and 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 i don't mean that in a bad sense they're just very vocal on certain things and they'll call you out i can tell you one thing right now there's a lot of tech YouTubers that don't do what you do. They'll actually take gifts coming from companies so they can review them, but you actually buy yeah. <laughs> your stuff. Why do you do that? Is it, is it because of that, that nature of Reddit? Because as soon as you buy it, is that when you compromise that type of community? Um, it's a little bit of both. Um, mostly I buy it out of necessity because there's a lot of companies out there who won't send me their stuff just because they're worried about what I'm going to do to it or what <laughs> like, I'm we'll going to say. We'll give it to you, but you can't do this. <laughs> They'll right. take it apart. <laughs> yeah. They literally don't want me to take it apart. And I was like, well, that's kind of what I do. So, you know, I'm just going to buy it when it comes out, you know? So, um, so I, I, you know, that's more of the reason why, you know, not so much because I'm scared of what Reddit says if I actually no, get No, no, no. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, that you'd be scared, but I think it's just that mentality of being authentic because right, they can right. sniff out a fake, right? right? Are you doing it because you're getting paid? You know, or are you just doing it because you're being true? I think that's the point that I was getting at. Definitely, sure. definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, what tips, like, I, and I think we need to talk about Reddit for a minute because sure. we have two people that were obsessed with it a little bit. But, like, <coughs> what tips would you give other brands and creators to to look at Reddit in a, in a, in a, in a lens before they, they take on, you know, a project? Is there anything, like, working with a creator or anything, is, is there any insights that they can glean from from that platform? It's, it's hard working with Reddit because it's like, you know, they don't, they're super anti ad. They don't want to be advertised to. Yep. 
So it'd have to be like a supernatural, yeah, I don't know, coming from a brand perspective, it's that's tough. Well, I, I can tell you from what we've done, um, we like to see what people are saying about ourselves or our competitors. And they can get very vocal saying, hey, this, this, and this, and this. We were actually doing an ad uh, for a particular company. And we took one-liners and said, oh, these are great one-liners. These are the problems that, these are the most vocal people on the internet saying right. it. Let's address these issues and let's address it in a, in a fun way. And so, you know, you have subreddits that are out there that are just very specific, very niche down on one, you know, one topic. And I think that right there is, is interesting. And I seen, I seen yours, like you, you were, you actually have a couple subreddits that's just Jerry rig everything. You, you, like, I don't even know who created it. You know, <laughs> that's the whole thing is the anonymity of it, of Reddit's wonderful, but I have seen it spread to other things. And, and, and have you noticed the, once it goes to other subreddits that your volume of views go up and do you think that's where you're, you're seeing a lot of your lift early on in your videos or? Yeah. I mean the, the Android subreddit is probably where I get most of my initial push, which each of my cell phone videos. Yeah. Um, but then there's like, you know, the elevator video was published to, um, humans being bros or something like that. And like, or, and videos, which like, if you're a front page on the video it's, subreddit, yeah, it's like, that's, that's golden there. Yeah, there's amazing. millions and millions of people on that subreddit because it's one of the, you know, the default standard subreddits, um, to someone who doesn't know Reddit, this is going to be really confusing. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, it is, but it's good though. Cause that's what they need to learn. Cause right. it's all about learning. Right? It's the front page of the internet. Like Reddit is, it is. the place it to is. be. I, 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 I like when it comes to Reddit and when it comes to Twitter, I don't engage. I, I'm just there to read. And, 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 I mean, it's, it's all research to me. And, and that's great. Like the, that, you know, you can, you can observe cause you, you like to observe people like, mm -hmm. uh, and see kind of patterns and stuff. But I, I tell you a story. We had, um, kind of a, a way to see content on Reddit. And I probably shouldn't say this It's a really bad thing to say anyway, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, we had this, I was working with this uh, company, um, uh, BYU television that they had a sitcom called studio C and, um, they still do. Um, and we had this golden uh, video that we were putting a lot of energy and time into is Scott Sterling. It's where uh, a soccer <laughs> goalie amazing. gets hit in the face a lot. Right. And, and we uh, had the video done six months before it was going to be released. And we strategically planned to do it right before the, uh, the World Cup. So, you know, you know, football and soccer is in people's minds and all that other stuff. And for six months... I was just, you know, uh, getting into a lot of these subreddits and having conversations because the, the first way that people will look for if anyone's fake on on Reddit is like their their back history. And if you don't have a back history or what you've done or what you've communicated with, because there's karma points and mm -hmm. you can go from there. I got some ma massive karma dealing with, you know, uh, soccer and so on and so forth. And uh, what was crazy was when the when the soccer video hit, I did post it, but I was already engaged in the community. I wasn't yep. doing anything outside of what that subreddit wanted. It did surface on to the front page of Reddit, got to the number one spot, and we got 21 million video views in a day. That's amazing. And, and I'm like, okay, this is even, this is so cool. And so when we were going back and having the thing and the, the writer of that is Matt Meese, we were talking about it. He's like, yeah. I had this other idea and I'm like, Oh, we tell you this is figured out. So, um, you know, we were going through, it was another soccer idea. We we're going to do like a, a brand integration with LA galaxy, but it didn't work out. And then he's like, I can, I, we can do it. We need a more fast pace. Cause we were looking at the data. We were looking at the numbers and, uh, we just needed to speed it up. He's like, well, let's just do volleyball. That would be awesome. So he, he got that whole thing. And my, 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 my mind was working. Okay. I'm already have this established stuff and all these things. But now it's volleyball. I got to go to that. Luckily, we had time to get that ready to go. But I didn't need to do that. I was actually just took behind the scenes photo. And it was his jersey. It said <coughs> Sterling on the back. And I leaked it as, uh, as leaked photos. <laughs> you know? And, and everybody's like, oh, freaking out. You know, about the whole thing. And then there was a there was a, a someone on Reddit that um, I really respected. Had a, a ton of karma. And I just reached out to him. and says, look, I go... I know it's not about promotion. It's not about anything. This, this, this will hit the front page. I go, if you want it, I'll tell you exactly when it drops, you know? And he goes, I, I want it. And within, within just a few, it was probably two minutes of Scott Sterling hit. He shared that on Reddit and it got to the number one spot of, of Reddit. And we got 32 million video views. And it's Dang. just like, why would you want to do that? And it's like the, the whole thing was, it was entertaining. It was everything they were craving for it. 
you know, it wasn't something that we were we were going against what the community is because I get the community, I understand what the community right, is, right. but I think brands and creators can learn so much because the creativity and the passion in Reddit is what fuels the whole internet. I, that's the way I look at it. Yeah, so. and but the only reason that your posts were successful is because you participated beforehand. Yeah, well, if, and I paid them a lot of money. Like I like I have accounts that I just you know I contribute and pay for server time just because that's what you do. Like I I'm, yeah, I love the I love the platform for yeah. sure if someone who doesn't know reddit comes in and just plops a post down there's a 99.9 percent .9 oh, chance yeah. it's just gonna tank yeah because that's how it is and and there's no integrated brand deals on reddit though man i'm telling you they, they just say they don't even yeah no nope. you no know. <laughs> oh man so um is there anything going on in the industry that you're really excited about is there anything that's like you know pushing the needle you're like oh man i, I can't wait to see this happen for me, I mean, I've been doing, so my channel's transitioned, you know, I've started yeah. with automotive, went to cell phone repair, then cell phone durability. And I've been doing, you know, branching out and doing, you know, some off-road wheelchair stuff and like the elevator video. But the next big thing for me, I feel like is going to be electric vehicles. Oh, cool. Because like, and it's not for everyone, like, no. And you got a you new know, electric vehicle. I did, Model X. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like there's so much innovation happening. Like, you know, all the progress that's happened from your cell phone five years ago to now, like night and day, huge differences. Mm -hmm. That's the electric car industry, you know, five years ago to now, massive things have changed. Um, the electric truck is supposed to be coming out soon with Tesla. Um, Are you on a waiting list for that one too? Uh, not yet. You have to okay. wait till it's announced and then oh, you okay. jump on then the waiting list. But I will be on that list. <laughs> um, awesome. Anyway, I just think it's so did, cool. Did you order the semi? Come on. If you want I wish, <laughs> get I serious wish. about this, it's like, I want to see you just drive it around and <laughs> town in that thing. Like, okay. You got your bottle S. I got the semi. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so cool. And I think it's it's like what the horse and buggy was to the the automobile is going to be what the automobile is to the, you know, electric vehicles. Yeah. That's the next big thing. So, I'm like paranoid um of hacking and and all that cuz it's like okay, we're all connected, it's all network and anything that's there, it can be hacked. I mean, is that is that go through your mind of security and stuff like that? I do, Almost you know, I don't like being tracked and Tesla, you know, they're since they're all computers attached to the internet 24/7, you can be mm -hmm. tracked 24/7. Yeah. So that does bug me, but I mean, at this point there's really no way to avoid that unless you just buy a gas powered car, an old one just drive around. Like from the 70s. Yeah. From the 70s. Yeah. Um I don't know. Like it does bother me, but if something huge happens, I mean, we always have food storage and right, right, and water stored somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. won't go down the doomsday. Topic. <laughs> you, you, you come to my house. We could. We'll, we'll be we okay. Could. We got well, ammunition too. You know, I, mean, I guess the plus is that things become more and more automated, and make, makes things easier when you're driving, which which is exciting. I, like like you always have trade offs. There's always mm -hmm. po uh, pros and cons, right? And I think the thing for me is I'm all for it. I'm 100 percent into it, but. There's two big issues that I have. I live in remote Utah, and to get to a charging station and to come up here, it's almost impossible. Like you had, yeah. we had a charging station in in Beaver mm -hmm. that shut down, and yeah, I know Dan with what's inside shut down. It did. It, there's a story <laughs> behind that, but anyway, with Dan with what's inside, he couldn't even come up to Salt Lake. He's like, I got this car, you know, he'd have to wait to charge or whatever, or make it to Nephi and wait for another hour or whatever but like we just need like like 600 miles like if we get 600 miles off a of battery we're right there in I, the I, next I couple of years in the i, next I couple really do believe we are but if we can get like that 600 miles and then two um and this is where i i don't care what anyone says about elon musk i said that uh, before but like he's making it affordable too i mean you can get a sedan uh in that thirty thousand dollar range and yeah it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you want on every little thing but it's it's an entry level product where I don't think, uh, I don't even think it'll be reasonable. And then two, you know, he's opening it up and letting people, like he wants to tra uh, transform the the society and the world and j just not being a, you know, a, a patent troll where he's just like hanging on to his patents and making sure that everything's there and it's not very profitable. At the end of are there other companies that you're impressed with that are creating electric vehicles? Rivian is the first one that comes to mind. Um, they've just got massive investments from Amazon and Ford. That's so cool. Um, and they... Say they're releasing their truck in 2020, and they also have uh, an SUV that they're releasing. Super cool. Seems like a good. Yeah, they're all they're, Every one of them is going to look futuristic. So, like yeah. that's so, what, <laughs> so, what kind of content do you think you're going to create around electric vehicles? Um, mostly just you know talking about them because people just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like they think that an electric vehicle is still a Prius, and like yeah. a Prius <laughs> is like a dinosaur compared no to what there is yeah. right now. 
Um, you know, the self-driving is amazing. The summon feature is amazing. Like it comes to you, the, the, the acceleration. I, I thought Tesla's were Priuses until Dan put me in his model S and hit the gas pedal. Oh yeah. It was was quick. I was like, and then at that moment, are you going to get the Roadster? Um, so I have a Roadster. But is it going to be the next like, version, or I have the original Roadster. Oh, okay. I have wow. not made a video about it on my channel yet, so it's okay. But I will. <laughs> um, so I have a Roadster, and a, yes, I am going to buy the next Roadster as well. I was a part of their the Tesla affiliate program, so I get you know a pretty hefty chunk off of the other one because of all the referrals I got. Yeah, oh, I wow. think I'm That's in. That was back in the day when they did referrals. Right, they like changed that. the program, so it's not as cool now. But I think I'm in the top hundred um, referral people for Tesla or something right now for the United States at least. That's so cool. Yeah. So it's kind of fun. Who's number one? Has Ben number one been sold? No. Wow. It's not. Yeah. Dan actually sold more Teslas wow. than Ben. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where does Dan rank? Um, I don't know. Top. I want to say top 10. I haven't looked though, but he's up there. He's oh, really, wow. He's really up wow. there. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. No, I, I'm, I'm excited for it too. And I think, I think, um, Mercedes Benz is one to, to watch too. I think they have some pretty interesting tech that's coming out. They, they, they were down to CES last year and they had just all this autonomous vehicles and it was really cool. You gotta be impressed with Bolt as well because they, they were one of the first companies to really mass distribute, you know, car, electric cars, you know, um, at an affordable rate. Yeah, and and I mean, I, mean, I, I feel like that they, they sometimes are overlooked. I mean, I, but because they're not one of these new like startups, but you know, the, it's, it's amazing to see how everyone is now finding their own different solutions. Um, no, no, that, that that that's that's really fascinating to me, and and so really, you just want to educate people on how these work and and why it's important. Right. Um. Um. And then, um, are you going to be doing any videos with autonomous driving? Yeah, everything. Really? I mean, it's like, it's all so Okay, I got, I got the video idea for you. All right. It'll be awesome. <laughs> I'm ready. So just go autonomous so you're going there, and then do a teardown video of one of your... Wow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. That's it's probably against the law. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I, I mean, do it you're, like, you know... You're merging two worlds together here. Yeah, dangerous. Do it, do it dangerous in a warehouse <laughs> that you own. He's like, I'll show you my pry tool. <laughs> <laughs> just going around in circles on this track. Oh, man. Okay, so that was a bad idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> so, so what drives you right now? Like, what, what makes it so you continue just to keep pumping out these videos and and continue to have passion? It's a good question. Um, I don't know. It's like from my very first video, like I mentioned earlier, I was like, "This is my career." Like, holy cow, this is it. Like, I don't think many people have that like defining moment of like, "This is what my job is going to be." Um. But my drive now is just like I just enjoy like my job. I enjoy making videos. I enjoy making content. Um, I enjoy interacting with people who watch my content. Um, and just, you know, I feel like I'm making a difference. Like I might just, it might look like I destroy phones on my channel for my durability test. But like those same videos, like when I tear down, you know, repair thousands of phones, you know, like it, help, it helps people fix their stuff instead of just throwing it away. So I feel like that is beneficial. We definitely live in a wasteful society and anything that we can to salvage is, is great. So, I mean, you know, being that resource is huge. And do you think like, like I'm very curious about your, uh, you know, the viewers in India, are they watching your older content too? Because that's some of the phones that they're actually having. I know they're watching the newer stuff cause they say, okay, we're going to get this soon too. But are they, are you seeing a lot of lift in your older content? Yeah, so people usually keep their phone for anywhere from a year to two years to three years. And so, like, my teardown videos actually, you know, stay super consistent throughout the lifespan of the phone because people break their phones all the time. And so they're looking at how to fix it. Like, I did a, an iPhone laser video where you use a laser beam to separate the back glass of an iPhone. And, like... That was a cool video, by the way. In, really in the past, it's been so hard to repair those phones, but this new machine and, like... People are craving this machine because it costs six hundred dollars to repair the back glass on an iPhone. That I got like ten million views in the first two weeks. Yeah, wow. and so like it's it's crazy. So they use this adhesive that you can't even take it off. I mean, you just whatever, and the laser just gets it right there. I was I was surprised of how accurate it was. Yeah, um, and how you replaced that. That was really cool. Yeah, the laser does it in like ten minutes instead of you know destroying your phone, basically trying to get the glass off. Apple is it is a terrible design. 
but they did it on purpose. They just want you to buy new phones instead yeah, of fixing 100%. your old ones. Do you see yourself starting additional channels one day? I am so slammed on my on the, what I'm doing right now. Like people ask if I'm going to start a podcast or something, but just, there's not enough hours in the day at this point. Well, well are you going to read audiobooks or do voiceover? That's what it is because you've done some <laughs> that, voiceover. That work, is though. what Daryl wants. No, no, seriously, <laughs> he he's done voiceover work. We've really? had people would say, "I like your voice. You're going to come do this." Like, it, what was that? Was it a training video i can't remember what it was, it was why don't we just have him partner here. on this podcast what's that just have him be on every time he's like welcome to creative disruption <laughs> <laughs> that'd definitely be an upgrade <laughs> oh man oh. I, dude, I, I get slammed all the time <laughs> whatever <laughs> um it was a it was a drain company oh it was a, drain a shower company. drain company they flew me out a to new shower york drain company. it was back when i was like first starting my youtube channel uh-huh. i don't remember how many subscribers i had like fifty thousand, sixty thousand. they were like I really like the way you explain things. Come make educational videos on how to um, <laughs> like fix our, how to install our drains. And, we're, and so they're still on YouTube right now. I'm not going to say who it is. Okay. Um, it's but go amazing. search. <laughs> Drain <laughs> what, what, installation what, videos. What percentage of your like brand deals are, you know, um, like upfront paid deals compared to like affiliate deals? Um, so I don't do affiliate deals anymore just because like it's so hard to keep track. And like, sure. I don't want to keep on top of people if they like just decide not to pay me or whatever. Um, like I said, there's not enough hours in the day. So it's right now it's, you know, just paid. You know, I make the video, you give me a check, and then we go our separate way until the next video. Sure. So, Yeah, I mean, it will be interesting to see if that ever changes. I mean, we do a lot of, like, rev share deals with our clients, but we actually pay, you know, our, our creators up front. You know, interesting. And, and, and we do that and just hope and cross our fingers that we're going to get a margin and that we're going to come out on top. And that's why we you know, invested a lot of money into AI and technology to, to empower us to do that. But as, as more brands become more and more focused on sales, which, you know, you know Daryl and I have talked about a lot that we believe this is, it's going to um, be a much bigger focus for like Fortune 50 and Fortune 500 companies probably in the next 10 years. Um, it'll be interesting to see as this world evolves, you know, if there's you know, a, a much um, more... Um, I, 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 it'll be interesting to see if um, affiliate marketing has even a bigger impact um, yeah. when it comes to um, content creators and video creators specifically. Because right now, um, you know, it, it's few and far between when um, a company can go out there and just go to creators and say, hey, take a rev share, because there's always a high chance that you're going to burn a bridge after that deal 100%. because it might not perform because they're not really looking at the data the way they should be. And, and two, they're looking at the wrong, like some of them are like, oh, it didn't convert. Well, mm-hmm. And it could be their landing page, not the video. It's like the traffic. Well, that, the traffic that, that's, like, that's like between 60 and 80% of it. Yeah. Like, and need, you need to have good content when they land. It needs to be very intuitive and yeah. you have to have a really clean UI. I've seen some pretty amazing uh, affiliate programs in the sense that, you know, they have an influencer give a video, then it's it's going to a unique landing page with the influencer on there and then even a follow-up system with, you know, some of the emails and stuff that could go out. It's, just voicemails. Un- it's unfortunate because the industry has always had a bad rap because there's so many bad actors out there right. where you're having to go and follow up and, and get paid. I, I don't know if you guys remember the acai berry controversy oh gosh, from yeah. like, what was that, like 12 years ago? Well, yeah. Where there were these acai, acai sites, and it wasn't like I was researching this, but it was like helping with weight loss. <laughs> but they were making so much money, and, and what would happen is they'd give you a free trial – then like try to charge you $100 a month or $300 a month afterwards. And for some reason, they got a lot of conversions and they conned a lot of people. Yes, wow. yeah. and, 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 and so unfortunately, you know, affiliate marketing has been kind of like scraping the bottom of the barrel. And, and, but I really believe because of there is so much opportunity with video, which usually has much higher conversions, um, I, I think it's, you know, there, there's going to be a way to do it in a much, I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot more legitimate ways for brands and creators to connect and do it right. Well, Zach, thank you, thank you so much for coming on and, and joining us. I know that you're super slammed. It's fourth quarter. You got a lot to do. And we're like, hey, could you come do this? Yeah. So thank you so much. And thank your wife for letting you come out of the house and, yeah. and play a little bit. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, thank you. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. yeah and always, thank, oh, go ahead. It's always fun to hang out with friends. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And thank all of you for watching this podcast or listening. Make sure you subscribe and you know what to do. Share it with your friends and we'll see you on the next video.